G'day, welcome to Project Smith Tech. Now, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. But today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing from parts, mostly from AliExpress. Wow, this is gonna be Ta-da! Now, for those who can't tell, yes, I'm being a little bit facetious, but let's have a look at what we've got in the box. No, for those who are wondering, yes, I have introduced this system before, but I'll just quickly go over it. We've got the six, total of 64 gigabytes DDR4 registered ECC memory for the processors. We've got the dual E5-2697A. That gives us a total of 32 cores, 64 threads. For the graphics card, we've got the 3090, 24 gigabyte. For the SSDs, we've got two Samsung 970 Evo, not running in RAID, although with Linux, Say for example, with this add-in card, this is just the eight lane RAID 0 card, M.2 inside these. It actually ran really well with this. And yes, RAID 0 does work automatically, although I never got around to doing any trimming work with it. But anyway, that's not what we're doing today. We're just gonna have an OS on one of the SSDs and games on this. And the reason why is I'm actually gonna be installing Linux Mint on this. So I'm gonna be doing some gaming with the system, see how stable it is. Do some benchmarks and introducing them now. Okay, so let's conclude the benchmark part of the video. This is the version of Linux that I'm using. This is the NVIDIA driver. Now for the NVIDIA driver, we should note that this is actually a little bit of an earlier driver. Now I did try and install the latest driver at the time. However, the mouse kept resetting in the center of the screen and there were some other things happening. So I decided to roll the driver back and it seemed to be stable enough, but this could have been because I'm running Cinnamon and not the Edge. But going forward, yes, if I was to run Linux for gaming, it might be beneficial to go the Edge. Frame rate, I couldn't record it the way I normally do, so it's a little bit rough, but we did get some good numbers anyway. Now this Crisis was the Steam version and for 1080p, I got an average 75 frames a second and for 4K, I lost about 14 frames a second. But overall, I found that the frame pacing was pretty good and so I'd conclude that yes running crisis it ran relatively well so yes the system can run crisis now as for cyberpunk I suspect that the problems that I'm having here was due to the slightly earlier Nvidia driver not much can be done going forward I do want to actually further investigate this so I'd be running it on a single CPU motherboard that way I can eliminate all the variables that may be cause this but my guess was that's what was happening is just the Nvidia because this is the cyberpunk phantom liberty edition as for control control was I'd say that the frame was just so many stutterings and the game was basically unplayable. Now I did try nearly all of the Proton compatibility layer, so I wasn't sure what was going on there. I have run this in Linux before and it ran relatively well. So for this to, it was a little bit disappointing, but yes, it was unplayable. As for Doom Eternal, Doom Eternal ran flawlessly as always, pretty good numbers and 4K ran fine and even got ray tracing work. Now, unfortunately, ray tracing doesn't seem to do much in Doom Eternal. So the penalty hit wasn't that great, but, and that concludes the benchmark part of the video. Now I did record footage of me playing games with commentary. So if you wanted to continue watching, you could do that. Also some setup of Linux. So just in case you, you wanted to maybe overclock your GPU a little bit, I do have some of that there and the path that I did do that. Now with the recording of the game footage, although I did play in 4K, unfortunately OBS seems to work a little bit different each time you open it and I didn't set up recording in 4K properly so, so I only recorded it in 1080p and there was some sound delay and I think this is just how I was recording the video because when I was playing Linux I didn't have that slight sound problem. So yeah, if you want to end the video now that's fine or if you want to watch actual footage of me playing the games, feel free to continue. Alright, now for the rest of the video. Alright, I think this is where we're going to start at. So running 4K, 60Hz. Uh, as you can see, all 64 cores and 64 gigs of RAM, essentially. Okay, you can see NVIDIA driver that I'm using is the 3090, but can it run Crisis? And just to let you know what compatibility layer I'm using, so for this specifically, I'm using 6.3-8. All right, how do we go? Now for this, it might be a little bit hard to see it. If I wasn't so stubborn and put it on 1080p, you'd be able to see it. Okay, for starters, I'm only going 1080p with everything flat out. Now, just during this quick gameplay, I'm going to do a bit of... I'll just let you know if it's freezing or something like that. So, we're in Linux. Whoopsies. Yo, man. I'm reading a lot of enemy activity close to your position. Yeah, thanks, Prophet. Okay, so a bit of a stutter there. Lots of frame tearing, though. I don't have um, V-Sync on. As you can see, the game doesn't seem to be having any problems. Ooh, it doesn't like being near the heat. All right. 
Ah, that's where that went. Okay, cool. Yep, in this hornet's nest, that's fine. I mean, it's not too bad. So, I, that's looking so far. It's about ninety frames a second. So, so I can't tell if it's the way that I'm recording it, but there is, seems to be a bit of a lag between the, say, the video and the sound. Normally, that hasn't happened before, so this is brand new for me. But this could be just the way that I'm recording and. I'm viewing it so so hopefully in the recording when I say the recording so I'm watching it on a second computer while it's being displayed on another computer just the way that I've got the setup cards so I'm predicting that that's what the issue is but I am liking this experience for a Linux I'm calling this a win okay let's see how we go in 4k okay so the frame rate seems to be very minimum well when I say minimum we're going from what it looks like as far as I can tell though I am struggling from 90 to 70. I gotta establish a track from. This is just so I can roughly get the. So, this is how I do a benchmark is so I'll just follow a familiar path. Depending on how accurate that I wanna go, is depending on how much I do it. So, crabs would have maybe some. Although you'd think that I'd have the CPUs to CPU cores to overdo it, no. but this game only generally runs on two threads any meaningful way anyway, which isn't bad still, but for its time. And so I'll do that, and that's how I do a benchmark. But we go into that. All right, we're done with this game. Yeah, as you can see, it would have been, and it would be swapping threads, and this could be potential stutters, but it didn't seem to be that bad. I was actually playing all right. So I'll let you lot be the judge of that. All right, let's see how it runs. Oh, let's do a synthetic benchmark, actually. Yeah, you see, the frame rates aren't great, and this is what it's going to behave like during the game as well. It's about basically all I could get out of it, so there might be some serious optimizing that I'm missing out on or there's something that I haven't quite gotten right. And obviously this is 1080p. Ah, me at the end of the results. Okay, so minimum 15, max 60, which really, okay. And that averaged 35, so. All right, let's try that in 4K if it will let us. Interesting, this sometimes happens. Yeah, minimum frame has gone up. But as you can see, it's not due to the GPU. It's just, uh, this is just what we've got to work with. So it's fine. I mean, what do you do? So this is Linux. You're going to expect some things that aren't quite right. And with the graphics, you can see that I haven't got everything absolutely flat out. As you can see, it's not running too bad, but... So there's that 4K. Not bad, eh? Just getting myself in a bit of trouble in Dogtown. Honestly, it doesn't feel that bad. So for whatever reason, if you didn't want to use, uh, well, Windows, either 10 or 11, and if you really wanted to, yeah. It's not optimal. Let's play something that I'm a little bit more familiar with using Linux. Proton Experiment. Now, let's see how it goes. If you're hearing like a slight sound like lag in the background, that's not actually just you. It's me too. Again, it could be something that I haven't quite got right with the recording. Okay, so we're getting 280 frames in the menu. Okay, very good.
Okay, so don't forget this is just 1080p. Oh, wow. Ray tracing in Linux. Beware, this may take a slight hit to performance. No, no. Okay. With Doom, it's a little bit hard for me to tell which is... I oh, went ray tracing on, so it's hard for me to appreciate it. So I don't think it has that much of a performance impact only because it's not really doing that much anyway. Okay, so that's with ray tracing on, allegedly, anyway. Oh, wow. Surprised that actually worked. Okay. And now we're going 4K without ray tracing on. Uh, 4K with ray tracing on Linux, in Linux. Ah, happy with that little test. That ran very well. All right, let's try control. Okay, so in this playthrough, I haven't learned to fly yet. Okay, there's a lot of stuttering in this. This is a very early version of Proton as well. Alright, let's run that. Yeah, a lot of stuttering. That is at 4K. Okay, now that we've done for all the game benchmarks and whatnot, what I decided to do here is just do a, a little bit more in-depth of setting up and some of my choices. So anyway... So what we're doing here, this is the part where I get my USB sticks, which has a Linux partition on it. Now, what we're going to want to do is secure boot. This is strictly a Windows feature, and we do not want that going into, into Linux. And we're just going to check that everything's running. A memory showing up. Process is all good and well. All right, not really much here to do. And we're going to boot from Bingo. Already set. Now, depending on your system... Ah, it sees both M.2 drives. Alright, no problem. Let's let's boot. Now, if you really want to, it might be a good chance to test my memory. I've never actually done this. Well, that was a huge waste of time. Done one pass, zero errors, and that was 5,030 minutes. Oh, at least we know that the system's well tested, at least in terms of RAM anyway. What is interesting, if you have a look at the, just some of the display, it, was, it wouldn't recognize the RAM. It didn't know what memory type it is. So I'm tipping that this motherboard, one, I don't believe it's full eight channel. I just think it's four channel. And I don't think the ECC part of it is working. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so before installing Linux, let's just have a look around. So this is going to basically load up the operating system right off the USB stick. All right, let's just have a look at the... And there we go. We've got all the cores. All the cores are, well, technically threads. All the threads are lit up registering all the ram i know linux quite well so i don't need to explore it that much but let's let's go to the install and i won't go through this um slowly if you want to you can check out my video installing linux mint on my true nas which is basically the same steps so this i'm just going to fast forward it here so i won't be talking or adding commentary i'll just be showing what i'm doing going through the process And we're done. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do when you enter that desktop, hit the update manager, it's the shield, and click OK. This is going to take a while, so no commentary, I'll just fast track this. Okay, reboot required. Do a final check, make sure no additions are being released in the meantime. Okay, I just had a weird thing where the mouse would reset to the center of the screen. And it just turns out that there's something screwy happening with the driver. Now, if I went to install it, it'd probably be fine, but let's stick to this one for now. Now that we've got that all sorted out, it's time to fix the internet. Now, Firefox, Mozilla Firefox, best thing to do. Ah, oh, there we go. Hmm, probably not. Ah, why not? Yeah, uh, sure. I might have to pause the video because it's not really critical that. All right, let's quickly ask 
being a question. And then it has this beautiful ending, I think. Sure, I'd love to say something to your audience. Hello, everybody. I'm Bing, the new AI chat mode of Microsoft Bing that can help you quickly get summarized answers and creative inspiration. I'm happy to be part of the this video and share some of the features and benefits of using Firefox web browser on Linux. Now, of course, I'm using Edge, but I hope you find this video informative and enjoyable. If you want to try Bing chat mode for yourself, you can visit blah, 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 Bing chat mode. I can answer your questions and help you with your projects and inspirations and creativity. It actually did the, the thumbnail. So if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you would see that the thumbnail has changed. It actually used chat GPT for that. I look forward to chatting with you soon. Thank you for watching. We're going to be done with that. What I need now is, let's see if Bing can find it. Green with envy. Hmm, interesting. Maybe we can do it for... Oh yeah, there's, this is where I get a lot of the stuff from. Any green with envy. There we go, flat pack. All right, let's launch. Let's do a couple of things. Fan profile. Oof. Hmm. All right, first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to change our fan profile. Add a new pro fan profile. New profile. Let's go. Yeah, that's what we're going to call it. All right, this is the way I'd set it up. 20 from 0 to 20. Have it on zero mode. 30 degrees. Have it 30%. 40 degrees, have it 50%, and you get the picture. 50 degrees, 75%, 55%, 90%, and anything past 65, just have it flat out. And that's what we're going to do for that. I'm not going to worry about any of the clocks and whatnot. I think it's fine. Currently, it's 23 degrees. Yeah, nice, nice. 